Hi guys, in this video we'll talk about the way of assembly shots in Guerrilla. So first of all we're gonna have a look about the look dev scene that we're gonna create from scratch and after that we're gonna have a look about the assembly scene. So into the look dev scene we're gonna work with two render graph. <clears throat> So in the look dev scene, we're gonna have. Um, so here is my empty scene. Um, I'm gonna um, work with the background. Okay. So here it is. And I'm gonna import my asset in typos. So here it goes, and we're gonna create a simple skylight just to have a look really quickly about my uh, just to have a, a raw fusion of my uh, of my scene. Okay, that's it. Um, I got some issues. The uh, the rats as uh, is the mouse is uh, um, going through um, the background, but that's that nothing. That that's gonna be terrible. So okay, um, we're gonna save. Uh, this scene and uh, I'm gonna work I'm gonna go to the directory I wanna work with and I'm gonna save into scene my job project okay so here he comes um so first of all, um, we're gonna uh, set the uh, color of the background. So I'm gonna drag and drop the background. I'm gonna create a new shader that I'm gonna connect right here. And I'm gonna go back to my right folder and I'm gonna drag and drop uh, the texture I've got of the background. This is a checkboard texture, and uh, I know it's uh, a linear version because it's an X here. Okay, so here comes the background. Um, I've got other uh, maps that I can play with, but that's nothing super important. I can, uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay, here comes the fun. Um, that's a TIFF SRGB, so Project Gamma is right. Okay, good. And um, I'm gonna pick the uh, camera uh, I've got in my scene, which is the uh, this one, the uh, render cam. I'm gonna check the main camera and I'm gonna render it through this camera. I'm gonna set my uh, scene uh, with a G -prod of my project size. So I'm gonna go for the full HD size and I'm gonna grab the camera and say that he's gonna use the project ratio. So he's gonna turn into the 175. Okay. Good. I'm gonna remove uh, one thread um, just to be sure my uh, camera is not gonna slow down. Okay. Um, my uh, my uh, streaming is not gonna slow down. Okay. So here is my simple setup. Um, what I can do, it's, um, that's not the way of working, but I, I want to show you, um, some concept about the other of the render graph. So I'm going to create, uh, another render graph, which is going to be the render graph I will working with about my assets. So Frodon, look, okay. And into this render graph, I'm going to destroy everything except the output. So what I'm going to do, it's working with these two render graph. Everything I'm going to do uh, that's going to be about the, uh, the my asset is going to be in the front uh, render graph, this one. And everything I'm going to do just to have a better view of my, uh, just to improve my uh, look dev scene, that can be a template definitely. But uh, in this case, I'm going to 
uh, I'm creating from scratch. But all I'm going to do is uh, it's going to be this on the graph. So um, I'm going to pick this object, the body of my asset. I'm going to connect a shader and I'm going to plug maps into it. So I go, I've got some already good one. Okay. So I've got two render graph. Um, but if I got two render graph, I can get collision, I can get some conflicts. So because if I got, uh, if I pick the same uh, shape, and connect it into my render graph and want to use another color. Um, it's not going to be clear from uh, Gary to know which uh, shader you need to work with. So what we're going to do, it's we're going to select this render graph, we're going to go into the settings and say this render graph got another above the other one because the basic one got an order of zero and this one gonna get an order of two. So we said that if there is any conflict, this one is gonna be the main, is gonna be uh, the priority one. And that makes sense because it's this one that can, that can contain uh, all my work. So, okay, you can understand that really easily. Uh, this one's gonna win over this one. Um, I can still, um, disconnect, uh, deactivate this one, disable this one, and I'm going to go back to the basic settings. Well, it's not really interesting to get uh, this really basic uh, right shader, so I'm going to switch it off. But if I get something like more that, that, that can uh, change the lighting or something else, uh, I can totally work with uh, in my basic render graph and it's not going to um, contaminate, spoil my um, uh, assembly scene. So all the work I'm going to do, it's, it's going to be contained this on the graph for the assets. All this part is going to be only about the look of my scene. Um, so in this asset, I can still uh, add some attributes and say, okay, I want to go for a subdiv of two and I want to smooth it. Okay, so right now it takes care also about the subdivision, about the attributes of my geometry. But um, I'm not really, really uh, uh, fond of uh, the um, path of the object because uh, I know for sure that in my animation scene, the uh, uh, coherence of the, uh, the naming of my object is going to be consistent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some part of my pass node and say that I just want to uh, get, I just want to call um, upper in the hierarchy of my uh, assets. Uh, let's have a look and say, okay, well, my asset got this kind of hierarchy. So I'm going to grab only the end because I'm not really sure about the front part. Um, I'm just going to get the um, the upper in my hierarchy because I'm not really sure into my front part. But what I can do is create another path and say that if the object got also Frodon in his name, it's going to work. So there is two conditions to be called right there. The object need to uh, contain Frodon is in hierarchy and also uh, get C underscore body underscore geo in the naming. So we got something that pretty open, but that pretty also selective because if I got a C body geo uh, elsewhere, it's not gonna work because you need to get front of his name. And if there is something all, 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 only front on, it's not gonna work also. So we got something like uh, that's pretty smart and select only the two condition of it. So I'm gonna save it. Um, this is my basic uh, look dev scene um, and I've got one last step to publish it. So uh, what I need is um, I need to work with the concept of referenceable. What is referenceable? It's each node in area got an attribute that's called referenceable and say that uh, when I'm going to import, uh, when I'm going to reference another G project, uh, the main scene, the parent scene, the first thing that she gonna have a look at, uh, the first thing that she's gonna look at, it's referenceable attributes. So why do I really need to uh, import in my parents uh, scene? Um, 
I, I, don't, I don't have any interest in my typos because it's going to be an animation. Okay, I've got no interest into my background. Um, I've got a really good interest into my look dev scene because that's the work I'm going to produce. So I'm going to override it and say, okay, I'm going to force that to be referenceable. I don't want to get anything about the, uh, the basic render graph. I don't want to get anything about the basic render path because it's just for rendering the image I'm looking at. And of course, my skylight is not going to have any interest into uh, my animation scene because my lighting scene, uh, because I'm, that's the part I'm going to create look, uh, lighting. So I'm going to save it. Um, and say, okay, I can be able to publish it. I don't have any publish system, but let's say that I'm gonna publish it. 